What's up, YouTube? It's Friday. Happy Friday to you guys. Happy upcoming weekend to you guys. But I'm going to go ahead and talk about ways to flip a Forex account again. Uh, it was just the same topic that was brought up to my attention again on the PowerPoint. People were like, well, can you like give like a full tutorial on this? Which I have plenty of times talked about flipping an account. But I will dive down to the next, uh, yeah, indicators. Let's talk about indicators. Uh, I don't use indicators anymore. So obviously this is relatively old. This was like way back when I first started live trading on that Trader's Way account and I flipped 350 to 26,000 just scalping and stacking and swinging on USDJPY. Use the JPY, right? So the US dollar to the Japanese yen. Now, do I recommend using these indicators? That's for me, if, if I was still using them, I would say yes, but right now I would say no. So a lot of people are probably gonna be like, well, well, what what is it that you use now? If you have been watching my live trading videos, you can see that there are no indicators on all my live trading videos this whole year, last year, the other year. So I've been trading naked Forex with price action and candlesticks, right? So I would recommend reading a naked Forex book. I would have to, I have to open that up, but I'll put it in the uh, description below. Uh, what are the two books that you should read if you want to get into my level of trading, naked Forex and the candlestick Bible. Now that ties with price action too. And so with these indicators on this PowerPoint that I give you guys, if you, I mean, you have to really understand what you're looking at. If this is the most important thing and every aspect of all the indicators that you use. I, I mean, yes, I talk about the moving average, uh, the relative strength index, uh, index, which is the RSI and the MACD, right? So those are the three indicators that I was using when I was flipping the account aggressively with Trader's Way, uh, you know, with that 350 to 26,000. Now, can you, can, can you go, uh, can you flip the account using, using the same settings I, I did? Yes, you can. But the most important thing is that if you're new and you're coming in here and I, and I give you this PowerPoint, right? And people think that this PowerPoint is like a miracle or something. It's not a miracle. It's not going to make you rich overnight. But it's something that you can reference on if this is something that you want to do. And you have to understand that it is high risk and aggressive trading. So you have to understand the fact that you are, that you could possibly potentially right blow your account. Okay. And you have to understand how big the risk you're taking where if you're trying to flip an account aggressively. So people don't understand behind all that. So that's why I, I'm just put up my, my disclaimer out there for those that really want to make this happen for themselves, but they don't understand when it comes to losing big money. So that is the biggest factor. I'm always going to talk about that because, you know, some people don't understand what high risk is and what aggressive trading is, but they, but they talk about making big money and they're not even making any big money. So, you know, back to the indicators here, these were the three indicators I was using. Now you have to understand, what these indicators do for you. So I put like some basic pictures here. So matter of fact, what am I doing? Let's go to the real chart. So uh yeah, let's go trading view. If I can go trading view here. Trading view. Trading view. Um I apologize, guys. Let's go to Euro. Just kidding. I'm going to go down. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to Euro. I'm going to be doing UJ. You guys know that. Jeez. Okay, where's UJ at? UJ, let's get UJ. Okay. Now, let's talk about these indicators because a lot of people are probably going to get too confused here. But... I try my best not to confuse anybody. Okay. Uh, I only want to, oh man, they don't give you the moving average anymore. Oh yeah, they do. Okay, I apologize. Let me delete this. 
bear with me guys because I want to explain this as much as I can um, what the heck okay yes can I remove this thanks okay volume we don't need the volume thank you volume just gets I don't believe I don't I don't really look at volume Okay, relative strength index. Now let's do this. All right, so in, in your MT4 mobile, I don't care what broker you're using, but when you tie the MACD and the RSI, they, they, they go together, okay, just like this. Now I know it's confusing because you're looking at trading view, and then when you look at your MT4 mobile charts, right, they're totally different, right, because of the grid lines are a different color, the background is a different color, uh, the uh, indicators you can customize your own color that you want, but I'm just going to go ahead and dive down through this setup here. Now, on the one minute, this is how I was doing it, right? So basically, you can see the candles right now are below the 10 day moving average. Now, this is the nine, so there's no difference. So, what you could do is, uh, can I? So you can change it to the 10. The 10 and the nine isn't much of a difference, but I'll just do just to clarify you guys here. So based on this, I would I would keep selling USDKPY. And my initial take profit would be uh, right down here at 103.88 and, and also down to 103.86, okay? Because there is support right here. Breaks that, then the next, next possible uh, the next possible is uh, 103.84 to break this, and then we have no other support, so until it comes back down to 103.8, exactly. Now, especially today's Friday, it's, it's always up and down a lot, and usually around this time, I wouldn't be wasting my time. So right now, it's, it's it's 10.15 a.m. here, which is 11.15 in New York. I don't waste my time trading at this point. Now, if you choose to trade at this point, like I said, based on what I just told you guys, I would place a sell and target 103.88 and then target 103.86 because this was the first support at the one minute. Now, obviously, another big factor is that since there isn't a whole lot of volume, right? A whole lot of volume, a whole lot of Fridays isn't your best day to make the most of my money. I just being clear on that. You 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 can make more money on Thursday, Wednesday, and Tuesday, and sometimes on a Monday, but Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, you can't go wrong. Mondays and Fridays are kind of like on and off. Because Monday, people are trying to get a feel for the market. It's just, it's the first day of like the actual markets are opening and everybody's getting back into it. And then Friday is closing. So usually the first two, three hours in New York, which is the London overlap with New York, is your best time to make the most amount of money scalping, not swinging. Then you can justify on what you want to scalp on. You know, so I'm just going on here based on these indicators for you guys. And honestly, you know, when you look at these indicators, right, it's, it's, just, it's just a lot to look at. So people add all these indicators and then they're looking at this, like the price right now, right? And you look at this price and it's just consolidating and they're, and they're going based on indicators right, because of the confirmation from the indicators, but it's not going the way, the way that the indicators are telling them, then you're going to be way off. And so that's why you have to justify if using these indicators would really, really work for you. So right now, I would just end up taking a loss because you can see that it's going, it's trying to push itself back up to previous resistance at 103.96. <clears throat> And it wants to create support here, which it did right here. So very important to understand, you know, that there isn't a whole lot to capture the amount of pips that you're getting for today, especially for Friday. And plus the fact that the London overlap has closed 18 minutes ago. So 
that's why I'm just that's why you gotta justify, you know, what sessions you're in, what time zone you're in, and if this this is the right time frame that you should be trading along with these indicators. So it's a lot, it's a lot to go through. But if this is something that you want to do, and I give you the PowerPoint, right? Let's go back to the PowerPoint here. I give you the PowerPoint. Um, and you're using these indicators, and you don't have a clue what these indicators are telling you you're basically all over the place, right? So the best indicator out of all these three is the moving average. That's the easy way I can say it. The reason why the moving average would be the RSI and the MACD is because the moving average, let's go back here. If you look at the moving average, the moving average is on the main window, okay? You know, this, this blue line that, yeah, this blue line right here. That's going with the candles, okay? This, this moving average is so much more effective than looking at the bottom indicators. When you look at the bottom indicators, the big problem is that the bottom window, there's your second window looking at um, a, a low and high indicators that are telling you what's when, when it's low to buy and when it's high to sell. It's all over the place. Then, then you're not looking and, and looking at the, uh, the actual price that's happening right now and you're not looking at the overall structure of the trend. Without that, you're basically just relying on, a lot of people rely on relative strength index, stochastics, MACD, and some other uh, indicators that are at the bottom, but they're not looking and focusing on the main window. The main window is already giving you the price, right? And it's already building structure, which is the candlesticks, right? With that structure, you, can, you wanna define whether it's consolidating or it's trying to find a new leg going back up or a new leg going back down. And that's why I talk more about naked Forex, price action and candlesticks. Some people don't like doing naked Forex. Some people don't like, don't like trading naked Forex, that's fine. But coming from, you know, coming from my past where I was trading with these indicators and now I develop to not use indicators, you know, I learned the way that naked Forex is much more uh, precise, right, and more profound on looking at your technical analysis approach versus just relying on a bunch of indicators to tell you. Basically, every indicator, you know, will give you whatever what confirmation, but that question is, is that confirmation reliable to what you're looking at? And so that's why I said out of all three, I will use the 10-day moving average. It's all default settings here. I never, I never modified any of my indicator settings to, to, uh, to a certain time frame, which you, which you can. And so, you know, with the 10 day moving average, you can, you can still make, you know, to be honest, I would, I would, if I would go back, I would just use a 10 day moving average and forget what's on the bottom here. When you, let's say, when you look at two different, different confirmations and now you're looking at a bunch of indicators, you all, you're all over the place. And some people don't understand what indicators do for them. And you have to really adjust to that and adapt to that all the time. So back to my PowerPoint here, you know, I would choose the 10 day simple moving average, the SMA, out, out of using RSI and MACD. If you choose to use all three, then you have to justify what's your primary indicator, your secondary indicator, and what is your fallback indicator that you can rely on if you are really, you know, justifying yourself to use indicators all the time when you're when you're trading all the time. So that's totally on you, right? So I don't want to make this a long video, but I want to talk of talk, you know, individual uh, PowerPoint chart step by step here for you guys and those that have been asking a lot about scalping and flipping accounts and if you know and what does it take to flip an account. You know, the, the biggest thing is back to your mindset. I cannot, like I said, I can't give you my brain and say, you know what, today you're going to have my brain and you can, you know, use that to your advance, uh, you know, to your advance, uh, to your knowledge and, and, and make yourself, you know, even better at trading. It's not going to happen, right? So you have to dive down, understand the fact that this, this is something that you really want to get into and you really want to aggressively grow the account and do high risk trading. 
you got to understand the fact that you could blow the account at the same time. Some people don't understand that. Some people can't, can't stand um, losing money, but they want to make money. You, I mean, I, I just don't understand that point of view because they're, they're, it takes money to make money, right? But once you make that money, then you can make your investments even, you know, you can divide and diversify your investments even bigger and, and, and much of a higher scale. But it takes a little initiative, you know, to keep learning and growing right consistently so that you don't have to fall yourself back even harder. Like you don't want to take 10 steps forward, right? And then take a hard steps back all the time. You get what I'm saying? Some people, some people are going so fast paced, they're making all this money. And then next thing you know, it takes one big crash. And then they're like, whoa, what happened? I took 50, 100 steps back and I'm back to phase one. You don't want to go back to phase. You don't want to repeat phase one all the time. Okay. So that's the easy way I can say. It. I know there's going to be a lot more videos on this PowerPoint because I am going to dive down to every single uh, slide, PowerPoint slide, and be a little bit more detailed and thorough on this and what I like and what I don't like and what I what I'm using now and what I'm not using. And that way you guys get a feel for where I'm going with my own forest trading style and how I'm doing right now. So other than that, that's it guys. Peace.